In this video, I'll be discussing the common normal variants in the chest. First one is the aberrant right subclavian artery. You can see that there is an artery behind the esophagus, and it's arising distal to the left subclavian artery from the aortic arch. Have a look at the sagittal section, and you can see that it's going behind the esophagus and then heading off towards the right arm. Here's the axial cut. Here's the right subclavian artery. Notice its position with respect to the sagittal image. The artery is going behind the esophagus, which is here. And it's arising from the aorta, distal to the left subclavian artery at Comorals diverticulum. Here is the left superior intercostal vein. Here is another patient who has an aberrant right subclavian artery seen going behind the esophagus. Here's Comorals diverticulum. And here is the left superior intercostal vein. Here's the esophagus. Here's the aberrant right subclavian artery. On a lateral barium swallow, you can see the indentation made by the aberrant right subclavian artery on the barium column. Here is the trachea anteriorly, here is the esophagus, and this is the impression made by the aberrant right subclavian artery. You can see that this matches the sagittal CT in a patient who has an aberrant right subclavian artery. Here's the esophagus, here's the trachea and here's the aberrant right subclavian artery which goes posterior to the esophagus. Here is a case of a patient who has dysphagia. The chest radiograph clearly shows that there is a mediastinal mass which is well defined below, at and just above the clavicle and then it fades at this point. It's denoted in this uh, diagram here. Patient underwent a CT scan here is the right subclavian artery, and if you follow it on each slice, you can see that it is aneurysmal, and it is going behind the esophagus, which is just behind the trachea. This is an unenhanced scan, but the curvilinear calcification gives a clue that this is an artery. And it's an aneurysm of an aberrant right subclavian artery. This is known as dysphagia lusoria, which literally means unusual dysphagia when translated from Latin. Azagus lobe. Here is the azagus lobe on the chest radiograph. There's the azagus fissure. Here is the azagus lobe. And here is the azagus vein. It is said to occur in about 1% of normal chest radiographs. And the composition of the azagus fissure is two parietal and two visceral pleural layers. So actually there are four visceral pleural layers forming that fissure. And at the bottom of the fissure is the azagus vein which connects the azagus, which goes in a paravertebral position, to the superior vena cava anteriorly. Here is a CT of an azagus vein an azagus lobe, here is the lobe, here is the fissure, and at some point coming up shortly you can see the azagus vein, which is denoted on the coronal by this structure here. Here is the azagus vein in a paravertebral position. 
This is the coronal aspect at the level of the azacus vein. You can see here is the azacus vein, which is joining the azacus vein in a paravertebral position to the superior vena cava. So here's the azacus vein, there is the SVC, and this is the coronal aspect. Left-sided SVC. It is much more common to have a double SVC than to have a solitary left SVC. Here is a left-sided SVC in a patient who has a right-sided SVC. And you can see that it is going behind the left atrium and joining up to the coronary sinus which then drains into the right atrium. Here is the axial aspect. So there is the left SVC, there is the right SVC. Just follow this. It goes lateral to the pulmonary trunk. It jumps behind the left atrium, joins to the coronary sinus, which then drains into the right atrium. Here is a patient with a solitary left SVC. It receives uh, blood from the left brachiocephalic vein. Note that there is no right-sided SVC, and as a consequence, this solitary left SVC is larger than it would have been had there have been a double SVC present. Here's the coronary sinus. Here is a patient who has both an aberrant right subclavian artery and a double SVC. Here is the right subclavian artery. It's going behind the esophagus. and it is an aberrant right subclavian artery. Now, notice this vessel here, which has just come off the left brachiocephalic vein, and we've got a right SVC and a left SVC. Follow this down, it goes lateral to the pulmonary trunk. It then jumps over the atrial appendage to lie behind the left atrium. We've temporarily lost it here, but it's going to come into view again and insert into the coronary sinus. And into the right atrium. Here is a chest radiograph of a patient who has a PIC line. And you'll notice that the PIC line is going into the brachiocephalic vein and then into a left-sided SVC. We lose the line about here. If the line were to go any further, it would go lateral to the pulmonary trunk, behind the left atrium, and into the coronary sinus, into the right atrium. There is a double SVC. Note when you reconstruct on the coronal, if you inject on the left side, you will see the left SVC more clearly. And here it is in the coronary sinus, all joined up to the left SVC. Here is another patient who has two lines, both of which are going into the brachiocephalic vein and then into a solitary left SVC. Uh, there's a theoretical risk that if you put IV fluids into a line such as this, it can induce arrhythmias. But the biggest complication is not knowing that this normal variant exists. Because without knowing, uh, somebody who puts the line in may think that the line is in an artery. Um, so actually knowing that there's a normal variant is very important.